welcome everybody. Hopefully on your screen, you see the earth spinning and three dots. Again, this is a program that is in celebration of Earth Day. And it is all about fruit from trees we eat. And my name is Debbie. I'm waving at you there if you can see me. Okay, so let's get started. Again, this is a website. If you need to go to the website for things to do later on, there are a bunch of storybooks that you can always access. And all of these classes will be recorded. And you can, at the very bottom of that front page, that msnucleus.org, there's a YouTube channel. And you can go to that YouTube channel and watch all of the ones that we have done for Fremont. Okay, and this one will be on there as well. It might take a day or two for Hagos to get them up online. All right, all right, let's keep going. All right, so today we're talking about all different kinds of um, things that we eat that are from plants, but mainly that are from fruit trees. So what's the difference between a plant and a tree? You ever thought about it? Now my background is forestry and wildlife management. So I know a lot about trees. I've had to learn more about the smaller plants like the cultivating and the farming kind of plants. Um, I know a lot about pollinators like butterflies like, but I had to learn a lot about the fruits and vegetable kinds. So again, everybody can learn it, it's really fun. So the difference between a plant versus a tree. Oh, look at that little rabbit just got bolted off of its swing. It was swinging so high, it jumped out of the swing. Oh, there it came back again. So there you see that swing. That's hanging from a very large plant, right? That's such a large plant. It is a tree because it has that woody growth. But look underneath the tree. The grass, that's a smaller plant. It's not a tree. We do call it a plant or grass, okay? So again, plants are green, but they can be big or small. Look at that picture over on the right. You see those little dots that are moving? Those are little plants. That's some little algae. Those live in the water and they're just floating around. That's what a lot of our ducks like to eat. All right, so again, plants are green and they can be big or small. Plants take in carbon dioxide and they breathe out or release oxygen, which is perfect because you as a kid, you are breathing in oxygen and you breathe out carbon dioxide. That's why it works so well to have plants and animals together. Because those plants, while they're doing all of that breathing, they're actually helping to clean our air. And our plants provide lots of food for organisms, like us too. And if you look at that big tree, so the all trees are plants, but not all plants are trees. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, let's keep going. So our main ideas in our class today, it's gonna be that a tree is a plant that has many shapes and sizes, right? And trees help clean the atmosphere and they increase the oxygen. They help clean up that CO2. They also provide lots of food for animals and humans, okay? Just our trees that are planted around our neighborhoods and our own yards, as well as those that are planted in the parks, provide lots of food for other wild animals. But that did you know that humans, that we can invent trees? We create different types of trees. That's pretty cool. So if you look at this picture, this shows you a picture of a tree. Starting at the very bottom, you see how the roots are all spread out? And the roots are actually taking in all of the water and the minerals from the soil that the tree needs. And then those are carried up through the trunk of the tree, that main central part. Then it gets out to the leaves. So that very top picture you see, that plant is actually transpiring. It's giving off a little bit of water, moisture, as it's getting rid of its oxygen too. So again, a plant can transport its food. It makes its own food. And it uses, again, the minerals and the water from the soil. And again, it needs sunlight, all this too. So that's pretty cool. So again, these trees, they're pretty amazing. As you walk around, Notice the different types. Notice how tall. See if you can find the tallest tree in your neighborhood or see if you can find the biggest tree that's biggest around. Those are what we call treasure trees. So see if you can find those in your neighborhoods. All right, now again, for a growing plant, it has to have a few things in order to be able to grow. So it has to have that sunlight. The sunlight gives us the UV light. 
okay? That's what the plant has to use in those leaves to photosynthesize. Can you guys say photosynthesize? Photosynthesize, it's a big word. All it means is that a plant can make its own food because it's got its roots planted in the ground, right? It can't get up and walk around. It can't move around. So it has to be able to get all of its minerals, everything it needs right where it sits, right where its roots are planted. So we've got our sunlight coming in. And at the very bottom, you see again, the water and the nutrients coming in from the roots. And you see it's breathing out the oxygen and taking in the carbon dioxide. Okay, which is exact opposite. That's what we need. We need the oxygen. Okay, so again, a growing plant makes its own food, but it has to have water, has to have light, and it has to have nutrients. Okay, and to be a tree, it's going to have some strong woody tissue um, that's in the middle, the cambrium, that, that allows it to grow very tall and has a hard stem. Okay, that's the big difference with a tree and like a shrub. All right. So if we look at the parts of a plant, now this is where you can, um, if you've got plants in your own yard, that's great. Make sure you get permission before you dig anything up though. But if not, you can always go to when you go to Lowe's or Home Depot and you go to the garden section, you can always look around there too. But look at the different parts of the plants with two big roots. Everything above the ground, we call a shoot system, okay? The shoot system is what's using the sunlight to make food for the plant. Everything below the ground below the top of the ground is going to be that root system and it's going to use the water that's used in the photosynthesis so again root and shoot so now looking at this plant that we'll start at the very bottom with the roots you see how those roots they get smaller they break off they get smaller and each time they get smaller and smaller that's what we call fibrous roots they get so small so that they can absorb every little bit of moisture and nutrient and they're all different kinds of roots. Now we also have stems. Again, that's the middle part that supports the plant. The fruit, that protects the seeds. That's where we're gonna grow more seeds. We can grow more plants if we can get to the seeds. But many of those seeds are protected for a while until they're ready to grow. Then look at all the leaves. The leaves are where we perform that photosynthesis. Okay, and again, leaves come in all different sizes and shapes. And the last part are the flowers. The flowers help in reproduction. That's again going to make our seeds and make our fruit. Okay. So fruits and vegetables, what is the difference? So to a botanist, that's a scientist that studies plants. To a botanist, fruit covers a seed and it protects it until it's ready to be planted and grown. Okay. But to a lot of people, fruit is just something that we eat that's tasty, usually pretty sweet, okay? So that's kind of the difference. Um, not all fruits can be eaten though. And a vegetable, when we use the term vegetable, that's just another part of the plant that we eat and a vegetable is usually just not as sweet. So usually when we're like talking about cooking culinary terms, we'll use like the fruits and vegetables. But honestly, anything that has a seed to a botanist is going to be a fruit, okay? So sometimes that can be a little confusing, but we're gonna look at some of these parts now. So if we look at the parts of plants that you eat, so we eat lots of roots. Remember, we started before talking about the roots and the roots that, uh, that we usually eat, they're things like this sweet potato. And this is a regular potato. These are actually roots. So they are down in the ground. They have to be harvested from the ground. And that's the part that we eat. So you may not even think about that. When you, again, you go to the grocery store, start looking at all these different parts. And flowers, we do eat flowers. Broccoli and cauliflower, cabbage, that's all the flowering head. It's pretty cool. We have to eat them there before the flowers bloom. Once the flowers bloom, then they become kind of too bitter. All right, now if you think about nuts and seeds, like sunflower seeds, um, pumpkin seeds, the corn, beans, rice, pistachios, cashews, all those are nuts and seeds. And then leaves. Do we eat any leaves? Think about it. Spinach? Yeah, that's a leaf. And lettuce? Bok choy? All those things. Those are just the leaves that are harvested that we eat. And when it comes to fruits, we've got things like our oranges. 
are apples, tomatoes, melons, pumpkins, squash, and honeydew. And again, there are many different types of fruit. Today, we're only gonna talk about two different types. All right, even the bark of a tree we can harvest and use. And that's where it's, we get our cinnamon and like our maple syrup. And the stalks and the stems, sure, you eat stalks all the time, celery. So the celery is harvested, the roots are growing down in the ground. This is a, some celery that has, the roots have been chopped off and the extra leaves have been chopped off, but you can eat those leaves as well, okay? So again, you eat all different kinds of parts of a plant. So next time you go to the grocery store, say, I wanna go, because it was really fun to go through and look at all the different parts and try to guess which one they are. All right, so again, we are looking here at some roots and leaves of a radish. So now you see that drawing, the picture that has the big round bulb, that's the part we usually eat of the radish, and we would cut off those fibrous roots, but you could even eat the leaves and the flowers of the radish as well. But you see how they're all laid in the ground and then that you have to pick them up because the radish is part of that root that's growing down in the ground. That's pretty cool, isn't it? But yeah, for this, you can't eat the root and the leaves. Oh, now look at these carrots. Now this is really cool because we see one person picking out one carrot from their garden. And you see how you have the green grassy top, the leaves, that's where the photosynthesis is happening. And then you see the small little fibrous roots on the carrots. But again, it's storing all of its food in that big orange part of the carrot. Now to the right, you see commercial carrots. Like that's how you do commercial farming. Somebody, engineers had to get together and work together, a whole bunch of people, to be able to figure out how to harvest and make this machine, or else it would be people picking by hand, right? But look at how fast this machine can work. Look at all those carrots. Does anybody out there like carrots? Wave at me if you like carrots. Let me see how many of you guys like carrots. Sometimes you like them raw, just out of the ground, and then sometimes you can eat them when, better when they're cooked. Okay. All right, cinnamon. So we talked about how you even eat the bark of a tree. Now this cinnamon is harvested from, again, the bark of the tree from the group of the laurel family. And you see all those pieces of bark that are folded up there, that's the cinnamon. Usually you find something like this in the store where it's already ground cinnamon, but you can buy the cinnamon sticks that are the bark and then grind it yourself. That always makes it um, more fresh, okay? But you'll see things like this, a lot of the spices, again, come from our plants. All right, I told you we ate flowers. Here's a head of broccoli. Now you see that big stalk growing, and then there's leaves coming out doing the photosynthesis. That head of broccoli that we usually eat, if you let that continue to grow, it's gonna make those little yellow flowers that you see there. And then the little like, yellow flowers make those little brown seeds. So a lot of times farmers will harvest some, but then they will also leave some to go to seed. And that way they have plants ready for next year. So the flower part of the broccoli is what you eat. And the seeds are produced when that flower matures. Now, this is a funny picture. This is over time. This is watching a zucchini grow. Now, zucchinis are cool. Because if you start at the very beginning of this, let's see, oh, right there. See, it's a flower. The flower is what gets pollinated, then it starts to produce the zucchini. And the zucchini is what's protecting the seeds. Have you ever cut open a zucchini and looked at those seeds? Most of the time we eat them, they're, they're not real hard. They're protected by the fleshy fruit. Um, but again, it comes from the flower. So the flower gets smaller and smaller as the zucchini grows larger and larger until it's ready to be harvested. All right, so again, why are these trees important to humans? We use trees a lot. So we look at, we use the wood in construction and we use the pulp, the wood pieces for toilet paper, or tissues, even the paper that you write on and the newspapers and the books that things are printed on. And you see again, the bottom picture with that bark, we use those leaves and the bark again for spices. And again, many trees do provide us fruit. You see her picking 
I think it's a plum, it looks like. She's eating a plum. So why do trees produce fruit? Have you ever thought about that? So here we've got an avocado, <laughs> bushing a little baby avocado, bushing the little seed. Is it for humans to eat something? No. Is it for trees to make seeds for animals to eat? No, but that does happen, right? Is it so trees can make more trees? Yes. So when you're farming or you've got a tree farm, you're wanting the best stock. So your sweetest apples, if that's what you're after, then you would collect the seeds from the sweetest apples so that you would plant those seeds next year and have super sweet apples. So yes, that is so we can make more plants, more trees. Now, trees do make the fruit that we eat. Now, a lot of times we get like say pears, there's a big giant pear there. We get pears in little cans or little plastic containers. We don't think of the whole big pear. And there's so many different kinds of pears because people have created the different kinds. It may have started out with one or two or three varieties, but then we create all different ones. So let's look at some of these fruits that come from trees. The apple, put your finger on your nose if you like apples. Do you like apples? Okay, let's see, peaches. Put your head on your, um, your hand on your head if you like peaches. I'm looking to see, peaches are usually sweet. They're really good with like cereal and all. Let's see, how about, um, how about put your finger on your chin if you like lemons. Does anybody eat lemonade or drink lemonade? Yeah, sometimes we use those as flavor. How about oranges? Put your finger on your nose if you like oranges. Yes, and those could be like tangerines and tangelos, all different kinds of oranges. How about put your finger on your head if you like plums? Anybody like plums? Now at Tule Pond, we have a lot of wild plums that are that are growing in cherries that are fun to eat. We can just walk along and pick them off the trees and eat them as a snack. So some of these things you might want to be brave enough and try them if you've never tried them before. Some of them are actually pretty good. And how about the last tree is cherries. Bing, cherries are usually the most popular. Anybody like cherries? Give me a thumbs up if you like cherries. Okay. So again, trees make the fruits that we eat. So the main kind of fruits that we're going to be talking about today are from the fleshy fruits. We're gonna be talking about the droops and the pomes. So you see here, we've got, look at this little kid eating this giant apple. Is that not the biggest apple you've seen? <laughs> you think he's gonna be able to finish that apple? Oh my gosh, it's such a huge apple. So an apple has a core. The core we usually don't eat, but the seeds are in the middle of that core, okay? And those seeds, those are what we call the palm fruit, where the seeds, the fruits are in little compartments. They're separated from the fruit by that core. Now look, at she's eating a stone fruit. She's eating a peach. And it has one large seed that has really thick coat on the inside. That peach looks like it's pretty juicy, doesn't it? And that's what we call a droop or a stone fruit. Again, it's one seed that's covered by a hard coating of fruit. So our walnuts, have you ever tried to pop open a walnut? It's got the fleshy outside, but then it's got that hard, hard shell, okay? That's exactly like the peach or the stone fruit, all right? And again, our apples, same thing as like pears, where the fleshy fruit, again, protects the seeds that are in a core. Now, there are many, many different types of fruit. Do you ever wondered why there's so many? Well, it has to do with all of our insects and our animals that help pollinate. They help pollinate all of our plants. So different plants use different kinds of animals. Some need insects, some use the birds. Um, sometimes the seeds will hook onto the animal's fur and be carried around. So there are many ways for these um, animals to help us pollinate. You see the, flat, the butterfly going back and forth between the two flowers. So every time it hits a new flower, it's picking up some pollen and landing and dropping some of that other pollen. Oh, look at the bee. The bees are great because they're fun to watch because they actually have little pockets on their legs and they collect the pollen and fill up their little pockets with the pollen. And then they take that pollen back to the colony to make their honey. 
but each time they're spreading that pollen around and that's what helped makes the new fruit. Now grafting is also a way that people that we have learned to make different varieties of fruit, okay? Now this is a little tricky, but if you've got fruit trees in your backyard or next time you go to um, a landscape store and you're looking at trees, look at the fruit trees because they're always kind of bumpy at the bottom. And that's because there are two different types of trees that have been put together. It's called grafting. So we take the roots, the root stock of something that grows really well, like usually the peach trees grow really fast. And then we cut a stem from another smaller plant. See how it's kind of pointed in? And we put those together so that, and now it's gonna to grow together. And wherever that's put, where that graft is put, it kind of makes a bumpy area. You see here on this other plant to the right, there's some kind of bumpy areas where you can see where they've been grafted. But that's how we create new varieties of fruit. Pretty clever, huh? All right. So just in talking about apples, have you guys ever been to the grocery store to notice how many different kinds of apples there are? Do you have a favorite kind of apple? Now this is just showing you a picture of eight apples and my favorite apple is not even on there. My favorite apple is a gala. And this is what a gala looks like. And it's just a sweet, real juicy apple. But the, all of these apples are created, humans have created all these different varieties for different purposes. Like some of them that are a little more sour, those are good for baking apple pies. Um, some are good for um, apple juice, you know, so again, all different colors too. You, some of you like the yellow apples and they make the green apples. Sometimes those are more sour and the red ones. So again, so many different varieties, but that's how we got all those different ones was from the grafting. Now. Here's a little story about the apple tree. And if you look at those apples, look at the gleaming fruit. Now, if you think about that, how would you be able to pick all those apples? You're not very tall, are you? You guys, most of you guys are about as tall as I am. I'm not very tall, but I'd have a hard time picking those apples. So we actually make our apple trees pretty little so that we can harvest them easier. But if you look at the flower, look at the very bottom. See the little sepal that's coming out? On the bottom of an apple, you will see that same sepal. So the bottom of the flower is actually on the bottom of the apple. So what happens is that part where the ovaries are, that's where the seeds are gonna be produced. And again, it creates all that fleshy stuff around the apple to protect those seeds in that core. That's pretty cool. But it can protect those seeds. So our apple belongs to the pome seed group or the pome. And scientists who study fruit trees are called pomologists. Now remember a botanist is someone who studies plants, but a pomologist is someone who studies fruit trees. It's kind of crazy. So pomes are fruits with coats around the seed. And then you can count the number of seeds. Now, when we're talking about this apple, that we have here. So I've got my apple right here as well. And you see that apple cutter that they have? It's kind of like this. Some of you may have ones like that. It makes it real easy right here is where the core would be, but it makes it real easy to um, cut that out. So one thing you can do is experiment, help you get your mom or dad to help you. Um, but you guys can start learning how to cut, but you cut an apple sideways like this, okay? And that's gonna give you that front view. But then if you cut an apple this way, that's gonna give you the star shape, all right? So again, we've got two different kinds of ways that you can cut the apple. And again, you see how that seed is protected by that hard, kind of a little hard piece, um, the endocarp. And the endocarp we usually don't eat. Like I like to cut that out too. I don't know if you guys like to eat that part too. But like a horse or a cow or deer, They'll eat the whole core, won't they? They put the whole apple in their, in their mouth and they eat everything. But people don't usually eat the core. Okay, so here we've got somebody that's picking some natural, some crab apples. And you see, look, he's got a bag that he's got to put them in, but he's standing up on a ladder. Look how many fruit there are. So this is the wild tree that was found in Southern Asia. 
and we develop different kinds of apples from trees like this. So we learned to take a branch that had a good tasting apple and make a new kind of apple. Okay, that's where we get our domesticated apple trees. So that's where you've got your favorite apple that you like to eat. All right, we also have, again, before you get the apple, you have the apple flowers, the blossoms. Now, if you look closely at these apple blossoms, you see the petals, it's got five petals. And then that middle part, the yellow, those are usually the stamens and the sepals, but those are made to attract bugs, to attract those pollinators, the bees and the insects, hummingbirds, those are all the pollinators. So as they move from flower to flower, they carry the pollen around and that's what's gonna then turn into an apple. All right, now here is a story about Johnny Appleseed. Now this picture on the right, that's an actual person, that's his real picture. And then this is a Disney version of Johnny Appleseed. Um, but this is a story about a real person and it's kind of turned into a folk tale or a legend, but I want you to listen carefully to the story and think about why he was planting apple trees. And was it to eat or drink like the hard cider? All right, so here is the story of Johnny Appleseed. Hi kids, gather round. It's fairy tale time. Actually, this one is a folk tale or a fairy tale for folks or a folk tale for fairies. Either way, it's a good one. Let's call it folktale time. This one is about American legend Johnny Appleseed. Are you ready? Let's go! Once upon a time, September 26, 1774 to be exact, a little boy named Johnny Appleseed was born. Well, they didn't call him Johnny Appleseed back then. His real name was John Chapman. Little Johnny Chapman grew up and decided to go explore the country. Remember, this was over 200 years ago, so he didn't get in his car, or fly in a plane, or even take the bus. Johnny took off on foot. And not only did he go on foot, he went barefoot. Johnny was always barefoot. He even went barefoot in the winter. He would walk on snow and ice and rocks like it was a cakewalk. That means something that's really easy. He didn't actually walk on cakes. Why would he do that? Cakes are delicious. Anyway, enough about his feet. Let's get to the apples. See, everywhere Johnny went, he carried a sack full of apple seeds. He walked thousands of miles planting apple trees. Some say he just dropped seeds as he went along, kind of like Hansel and Gretel did with crumbs. But Johnny Appleseed didn't do that. He planted apple nurseries. <laughs> They're called nurseries because they're for baby trees. I wonder if Johnny read nursery rhymes to the baby trees. Little Jack Horner sat in a corner eating an apple pie. Uh, I mean, blueberry pie. Pretty soon, people all over the country knew the man called Johnny Appleseed. A guy like Johnny is hard to forget. Not only did he go around barefoot, planting apples, he also had a habit of giving away his clothes to people who needed them. Sometimes, he just wore a sack with armholes cut out. But the strangest thing about Johnny's outfit was his hat. He wore a tin cook pot on his head. You might think that's strange, but have you ever tried to cook beans in a baseball cap? Forget about it! Johnny looked strange, but that didn't stop people from loving him. He was kind to children and kind to the poor. He loved animals and nature, even bugs! One time, he put out his campfire because he saw a mosquito get burned in the flame. Ouch! Oh, sorry about that. Thanks, Johnny. Johnny Appleseed spent his entire life just planting apples and happiness. Over the years, people shared their stories about him, turning Johnny Appleseed into a legend. 
The stories grew and spread, just like an apple tree in its seeds. And that's why we still talk about Johnny Appleseed today. Moral of the story, kids. Be nice and share your apples. And maybe you'll become a folk hero with a cool nickname. And best of all, you might not have to wear shoes. Okay. So, again, that's kind of a silly story that tells you about Johnny Appleseed. But he was a real person. Some of this story is true. Um, he was originally from Austria and he did travel around barefooted. He believed that he shouldn't have a lot of extra stuff and he wouldn't ever ride a horse. He um, would just walk himself, but there is more to the story. That's before there were a whole lot of settlers here and they needed to have an orchard and able to be able to set up their land. So he knew, he was a pretty smart man. He knew that if he set up some some apples, if he set up some nurseries and started the apple trees growing, that then people would come there and then he would have he would have apples to sell or they would have to buy his parcel of land and they would use those apples then for making their hard cider. So again, more to the story, but that's how stories get passed down over time. It's kind of funny if you think back through some of the stories in your own family, if you're lucky enough to have grandparents and all living with you, ask them about some of their old stories and how things are changed over time. But it's kind of funny. So that's the Johnny Appleseed, but he did indeed plant a lot of orchards all over the United States with these apples. So now modern day, when it comes time to harvesting all these different types of apples, there's so many different types and we have a lot of different ways to harvest them. You saw earlier, somebody was picking them by hand. And now look at this one that's shaking the tree. There's a big machine. And then you still have to pick up all the apples off the bottom, right? There's probably a machine for that too. But then look at this one over here. There's a big giant, like a vacuum. It's a robot that's actually sucking the apples off. So if they're ripe, they will come off. If they're not ready yet, then they'll hang on to the branch. Kind of funny, huh? So again, it takes more than just a botanist to make an apple orchard. It takes lot of physicists, lots of different um, types of workers have to be involved. Now, why should you eat an apple? We used to always hear the saying, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. And that's because our apples give us lots of different things. Main thing they give us is fiber. Because if you have enough fiber, then that means you'll poop. A lot of kids end up going to the emergency room because they can't poop. They're constipated <laughs> and that's a problem. Whereas if you eat an apple and, and fruits that have a lot of fiber, then that solves that problem. All right, our apples also have a lot of vitamins. We hear the word vitamin all the time. If you look over on the right side, the C, can you find the letter C? E, B3, B6, B1, A, and K. So those are all vitamins that your body needs. And it also has minerals. Can you find the letter K, the letter P, that's phosphorus, C, A, is calcium, Mg, magnesium, Na is sodium, iron and zinc. So again, lots of important vitamins and minerals are provided in this apple. And it's only about 60 calories. So it's a good, great little snack. And it's already does, it has its packaging, you know, it doesn't have to have anything packaged around it. All right, but another type of fruit that we're looking at today is the one with the stone fruit, and that's our peaches. So this is a, you see a nice little peach being picked here that has kind of a fuzzy outside. And look at that pretty peach flower. Look at that pretty blossom. See, it's got kind of a pink color, and you see the yellow pollen that's at the very end of those pistils. And look at the bottom of the flower. You see those little sepals. That's again, gonna be on the bottom of the peach. So here's a funny story. Story. Listen to the words. He goes really quick, but listen to the words if you can. My beautiful blossom will take your breath away. Cherries, plums, and I are related in a way. The Chinese discovered me long ago on fine day. A color gets his name from me today. 
My skin is velvety and the yellowish red In the center is a seed in a woody pit red Yellow juicy and sour sweet is my flesh Have me with my skin ripe and fresh Have me raw or in the form of dishes Rich in vital minerals, I'm highly nutritious My jams, jellies, juices are simply delicious Name me, I'm so very luscious You're a peach and indeed precious <laughs> that was a lot of information, lots of quick words, but again, it gave us lots of information about a peach. Now, the natural peach is the small little tiny thing that was found, um, three varieties that were found in China originally, and it tasted kind of earthy, sometimes it was sour, sometimes it was sweet, it had a waxy skin, it wasn't very edible. Um, and you see it was very small. Most of it was taken up by the stone seed that was on the inside. So now over the years, look at the peach that we have engineered. We've created over 200 different types of peaches. And this one tastes real sweet. And it has a very soft skin. So again, very different than the original. And that's just by each time picking the seeds that was the apple that, or the peach that we like to eat and then just reproducing those seeds. All right, so now these peach pits on the inside, remember the girl at the beginning that was eating her juicy, juicy peach? The inside is this peach pit, and that's where the seed is. It's got this hard woody covering, and we call it a droop or a stone fruit, okay? So inside that woody covering is just one seed that has that hard covering and the fleshy fruit. All right. So here's the activity that we have to do. And if you have this sheet, great. If you don't have it, don't worry about it. All you need to do is just kind of, if you have time later to look at the difference between an apple and a peach. In studying trees, your teacher will give you a worksheet that you can color up to look like this. The bottom is an example of an apple. Again, you may want to color your apple yellow or green, whichever type you like. And this top is a peach. Okay. Now we're looking at the seeds that are inside these fruit. So I've got an apple here. If you can get your mom or dad to cut the apple so that it's cut in half. What you're looking for, this part right here, that's the core. So I've got a little bit of the core on each of these sides here, another piece here. And then I've got a dark seed, but then there's a hard membrane right here behind that. So that's why we usually cut out the core. That hard membrane is what protects that seed. So again, if you can get your mom or dad to help you cut the apple, then you've got it to eat as well. Okay, so again, that was showing you how to cut the apple when you're cutting it right down the middle or through the core. Then you can also try to cut it a different way as well so that you get that star. But let's look at some fruits that we have from other trees. We get lemons cherries, pomegranates, apricots, and pears. Look at Donald Duck over there. Not sure what he's harvesting. Oh, there's another one's on a ladder putting them in a bag. Let's see what we can find out. So here's a lemon tree. Here's someone harvesting a lemon. I see lots of lemons in um, Fremont. And you see a piece of the lemon cut open so you can see the inside. And then you see also the flower of the lemon. And it says, I put the pucker in lemonade. I'm a little sour, that's how I'm made. But if you forget to wear your coat or find yourself with a sore throat, I'm around and yellow like the sun. And vitamin C, I have a ton. So that's why we always eat, have the lemon, like the warm lemon juice, um, if you've got a sore throat. Here's a cherry tree. Has anybody ever seen those blooming? We have them in, in um, Washington, D.C., all along those cherry trees, trees that bloom. And you guys have a bunch there too. Uh, but look at this, cherries, cherries, ruby red. Want to try one? Go ahead. Cherry pie or cherries jubilee. Find the pit and plant a cherry tree. So if you look at her playing with these cherries down here, these are probably those bean cherries. There is a hard pit in the middle, just like our peach, okay? got that hard pit in the middle. So when you're eating them, and especially the ones we eat at Thule, we pop in our mouth and we kind of wiggle around and we get all the soft stuff off and then you, poof, you just poof, spit out the 
the seed and it lands on the ground and wherever it lands, it might grow a new tree. Oh, pomegranates. Now this is an odd fruit. Look at how big that fruit is. Big and red, we see them a lot around Christmas time. And when you cut the pomegranate open, look at all those little balls, all those little seeds. And look at that raccoon. That raccoon's going nuts over those seeds. So for the pomegranate, my outsides are hard. You can't eat my skin. Only the seeds you find within. I come from India and I'm good for your heart. My seeds sometimes are sweet and sometimes are tart. So that's the pomegranate. But look at all those seeds. Is that, that's not, it's totally different than when you cut an apple open, right? Or an orange. Yeah, totally different. Okay, here's an apricot tree. Now an apricot is very much, um, you see the, the yellow and look at those beautiful flowers, kind of the creamy um, pink. And you see, look, I see monarch butterflies all over those apricot flowers. Again, they're pollinating, moving the pollen around. And look at all the fruit on that branch. It, it's got so much fruit on that branch, it might break that branch. So they've got to get that apricot harvested. And the pear tree, there's a partridge in a pear tree. Now when our pear trees bloom, they have these white flowers, but they're smelly. They're smelly flowers. They have a lot of sulfuric acid in them. Um, but as you see these pears, a close picture of a pear, um, when you cut it open, it's a lot like an apple. It has some seeds that are protected right in the middle by the core, okay? So if you've never eaten some pears, they're usually pretty soft and pretty sweet and again, all different kinds. And you don't have to eat them out of the can or the plastic container. You can actually eat it just like an apple, okay? All different kinds. Now, are fruit only from trees? This is a hard one. We've got a whole bunch of stuff coming out of this tree. Oh, some grapes and a strawberry. There's an apple that's coming out. Oh, that looks like an artichoke. Bananas. Oh, eggplant. Do you think all of those come from trees? What do you guys think? I'm sitting there looking. No, you are right. So if we think about things like kiwis and strawberries and blackberries, have you guys ever eaten any of those? Yeah, if you've eaten any of those, they do not come from trees. The kiwi is grown from a vine, kind of like grapes. You see how that vine is up off of the ground? And look at its beautiful white flower and you see the yellow pollen. So underneath my bristly skin, my luscious fruit is housed within. I'm full of seeds, my flesh is green. I have the prickliest skin you've ever seen. Kiwi Kiwi is my name. My juicy insides are my fame. So when you cut open a kiwi, the outside again is hard and bristly. We don't eat the outside part, but the inside part is full of seeds and juice. A strawberry, look how many seeds that has. Look at all those. All those seeds are protected in that fleshy part. But a strawberry grows on the ground and it grows from short stem runners. So it just keeps growing from stem to stem. That's pretty cool. And you see the white flower. So again, once that white flower gets pollinated, that's what's gonna turn into the strawberry that you can eat. So again, those are harvested just straight from the vines on the ground. Now, blackberries. You have to be careful with blackberries because sometimes they have thorns. There is a native California one that doesn't have thorns. Um, sometimes we're lucky enough to find those. And you see the roots there of the plant and you see the pretty flowers. And as these seeds are again coming into when they're ripe, they're gonna be the probably the darker color. If you ate one of those red ones, you'd make a sour face. Can you guys make a sour face for me? What would a sour face look like? Ooh, yeah, if you pick fruit that's not quite ripe yet, it's gonna be sour. All right, so which fruits were important in early human time? If you think about it, before we had refrigerators um, and big ovens and things like that, it was important to be able to have foods that you could preserve and keep for a very long time. So that's where we get things like raisins. So raisins are grapes. When the grapes are dried, they become the raisins. Look at that's a dancing California raisin. 
California produces most of the raisins in the United States. So that's why we have our dance in California raisin. Now the one in the picture in the middle, that's a fig. Has anyone ever eaten fig Newtons? I like fig Newtons. And figs are good in a salad and all too. So, but again, lots of seeds and that does come from a tree. But again, the figs could dry over a period of time. Um, and then we've got even prunes. So the prunes could also dry and you could keep those around for a long time. 